Well, welcome to trigonometry. Now, most of you think trigonometry deals with triangles and measuring angles and measuring sides, and yes, it does, but there is a whole other portion to trigonometry called circular functions. And what we're going to learn in Math 20-1, we're going to learn some things about angle rotations and reference angles and things like that. That is all going to lead into a unit in 30-1 on solving trig equations and graphing trig functions. So everything we learn here is really important. It's setting a base and a foundation for that next course. Lots of what we're going to learn in this unit is going to be totally new and different for you. You're never going to have seen this before. So you may end up having to ask a bunch of questions. You may end up having to pause the video, rewind it, watch things again. That's okay. But make sure you have a good handle on this. It will make your life easy in 30-1. So the first thing we're going to talk about are angles in, in standard position. And the first thing in that situation is we have to talk about something called a rotation angle. That means we actually have to draw angles in our coordinate plane. And we're going to draw angles initially between 0 and 360 degrees. Yes, angles can be larger than 360 degrees, but for our purposes, we're going to focus on that situation. Now, when we talk about rotation angles and we talk about drawing rotation angles, as I said, we talk about drawing this in a coordinate plane. So I want you to kind of superimpose an x and a y axis on this angle that they've given us here. Now, something you need to know about drawing an angle is that every angle has something called an initial arm. That's the starting position of the angle. That initial arm is always on the positive x axis. Where the angle stops, that's called the terminal arm. Terminal meaning stopping. The vertex, the point of the angle, is always at the origin. It's always at the center of our coordinate axis. Now, we can draw angles in two ways. We can draw angles as positive angles, and positive angles go counterclockwise. So if I draw an angle here that goes counterclockwise, that means it's a positive angle. Negative angles go clockwise. When we draw an angle like this, it is said that this angle is in standard position. Standard position is with the initial arm on the positive x-axis and your terminal arm occurring somewhere in this diagram. Now, if you look at this diagram here, they've drawn an angle that's 220 degrees. They started at zero, they've got their initial arm at zero, 90, 180, 220 is down here. Now, how do we describe where that angle is? Well, we want to actually describe the position of an angle by talking about quadrants. And what you need to know are the labels for these quadrants that we have. Quadrant 1 is the top right corner. Quadrant 2 is the top left corner. Quadrant 3 is the bottom left corner, and quadrant 4 is the bottom right corner. It's really important to refer to positions of angles by quadrants, and that's a common thing for all mathematics around the world. Do we have to use a protractor to draw this 220 degree angle? No, we don't. We just need to make sure we've got it in the correct angle and approximately where we believe it's situated. Something else we do when we, uh, because we're drawing a positive 220 degree angle, we draw in this arrow to show that the rotation is positive. We show where it starts and where it ends. So we're going to practice sketching a couple of angles here. First angle we're going to do is we're going to sketch a 120 degree angle. So the first thing you need to figure out is in what quadrant is 120 going to be? Well, remember, this is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So 120 degrees is between 90 and 180. So that puts 120 over here in quadrant 2. And since it's a positive rotation, we're going to draw this in. Now, lots of times, you also want to label this angle 
with its degree measure. Because if I didn't have this 120 at the top, and all I had was this drawing, I would have no clue of what that angle is. 309 degrees. Well, 309 degrees is going to be down here in quadrant 4. It's between 270 and 360. It's probably a little bit closer to 360. So we draw our positive rotation all the way around, and we label this as 309 degrees. 17 degrees is in quadrant 1. It's between 0 and 90, and it's fairly close to the x-axis. So you're going to have a small arrow showing the rotation, and we label that angle is 17 degrees. So, not that difficult to do. Now, what we're going to look at in this next example is we're going to look at something called co-terminal angles. These are angles that have the same terminal arm. That means they're different in measure, but the terminal arm ends up at the same position. So if you look at these three particular diagrams that are up here, they all have the terminal arm in quadrant 2, but the measures of them are actually different. It says the first angle is 150 degrees. Well, if you draw 150 degrees in standard position, 150 degrees is right there. The second one says negative 210. Well, negative 210, if we do these rotations negatively, this is 0, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 360. So negative 210 is between negative 180 and negative 270. So it is here. So this is our negative 210 degrees. The third angle is actually 510 degrees. Now 510 degrees, if you subtract 360 from it, you get 150 degrees. That means we're going to do one complete rotation of 360 degrees, and then we're going to go an additional 150 degrees. So how we draw that we have more than one complete rotation is we actually start at our positive x-axis, and we make one complete rotation, and then we continue on until we get to our terminal arm, and that is our 510 degree angle. So when you see drawings with multiple rotations or multiple spirals in them, that means they are uh, more than 360 degrees. Um, so what we're going to do is, what you need to know is that with any terminal arm, there are an infinite number of coterminal angles, and that's in our notes here. We're going to highlight that. Why is there an infinite number of coterminal angles? Because if I keep doing more and more and more rotations and just end up back at this particular same terminal arm, it's going to give me a coterminal angle. If I, for example, if I had an angle of 115 degrees, how can I figure out co-terminal angles for this? Well, if I add 360 and if I subtract 360, those are going to give me co-terminal angles. So 475 is a co-terminal angle, and 115 minus 360 tells me negative 245 is also co-terminal. Why do you add 360 and subtract 360 with coterminal angles? Well, that means this angle starts at this arm, and you make one more complete rotation to get back to that arm. So I initially had a 150 degree angle here, and if I go around another 360 degrees, I end up back at the same position, and that's going to give me a coterminal angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, continue on with looking at angles, looking at drawing angles, but the next group of angles are they're kind of drawn differently. Instead of telling you the actual measure of an angle, they actually want you to draw an angle based on the position of a point on a coordinate plane. So in the first example here it says the point P lies on the terminal angle theta, and theta is a Greek letter to represent angles, it says draw the angle in standard position. So the point we've got is 2 and negative 4. 
So if I look at my x-axis and I look at my y-axis, 2 and negative 4 is down here in quadrant number 4. And so I draw in my terminal arm from the center to that point at 2 and negative 4. In standard position, this arrow goes all the way around from the positive x-axis. If we draw our second angle, it says go to negative 5 and negative 1. So that's going to put us in the third quadrant. And if we draw our angle in standard position, we start at the positive x-axis and we draw it around. So that's not too difficult, it's just a little different. Now, we're going to go from drawing angles to talk about something called reference angles. Reference angles are really, really important when you get into solving equations in 30-1. So knowing how to find a reference angle is quite important. The biggest, most important thing that most people have trouble with when they talk about reference angles is where is the reference angle located and it is located or the reference angle is formed between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So in this particular diagram over here the reference angle is this angle here between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So I'm going to label that as our reference angle. In this particular case, this first angle, if we look at the example here, is 141 degrees, and the reference angle is 39 degrees. And you might be wondering, well, how the heck did you get 39 degrees as a reference angle? Well, we know from the positive x-axis, which is 0, all the way around to the negative x-axis is 180 degrees. But if I went 141 degrees, I haven't gone or rotated all the way to 180 degrees. So if I go 180 minus 149, that gives us our 39 degree reference angle in here. So we are going to practice drawing some angles and calculating their reference angle. The first one says that we need to draw a 243 degree angle. Well, that 243 degree angle is going to be down here in quadrant number 3 because it's more than 180 but it's less than 270. So this is 243. How do I calculate my reference angle? Remember the reference angle is this angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. Well, I know I went 180 degrees to get to the pos or negative x-axis, and I've got to figure out how much further did I go around to get to 240 degree, 43 degrees. So if I subtract 180 from 243, I get 63 degrees. Something else you need to know about a reference angle is a reference angle is always between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, okay? It's not going to be larger than 90 degrees. If I draw a 337 degree angle, then my reference angle is here. It's between my terminal arm and my positive x-axis. So I haven't quite gone all the way around to 360. So if I take 360 minus 337 and I figure this out, I'm going to get 23 degrees for my reference angle because I have 23 degrees more to rotate around if I was to get to 360 degrees. If we look at 70 degrees, 70 degrees is in quadrant 1. And in this case, 70 doesn't have a reference angle because it already is the measure of the angle between the terminal arm and the positive x-axis. So 70 is just the measure of the angle. There's no reference angle there. So the next question says, on a grid, draw a reference angle of 58 degrees in each of quadrants 1 to 4. So what that means is they actually want us to have four terminal arms. And they want us to actually draw in a reference angle of 58 degrees in each quadrant. It says state the measure of the rotation angle in each quadrant. Well in quadrant 1 this angle of 58 degrees is just going to be our rotation angle. 
in quadrant two, if we rotate all the way to quadrant two, we haven't quite gone to 180. So we have to go 180 minus 58. And we find out that we have 122 is the measure of this angle. If we go to quadrant three, we're going to have gone 180 degrees plus 58 degrees more. So if I figure that out, I get 238 degrees when I'm in quadrant number three. And if I go to quadrant four, I haven't quite gone all the way to 360. So I have to go 360 minus 58, and I get 302 degrees as the actual measure. Now it says, let the point 5 and 8 be a point on the terminal arm of rotation in quadrant 1. State the coordinates of points Q, R, and S, which are on the coterminal arms of the rotation angles in the other quadrants. So if this has the point 5 and 8, this point P, then point Q is going to be negative 5 and 8. Point R is going to be negative 5 and negative 8. And point S is going to be 5 and negative 8. Basically what you're doing is you're reflecting those points into the different quadrants to get the different coordinates. Okay, one last thing we need to talk about. We need to determine where uh, different angles are with different reference angles. So what they want us to do here, it says we've got a reference angle of 25 degrees and we're in quadrant 2. So here's quadrant 2 and this is 25 degrees. So now they want us to find out the measure of the actual rotation angle in quadrant 2. Well that's going to be 180 minus 25 which gives us 155 degrees. In quadrant 4, we have a reference angle of 60 degrees. So that's 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. And the reason it's 360 minus 60 is in quadrant 4, you have not quite rotated all the way around to 360. You're 60 degrees away. So you're subtracting 360. Here in quadrant 3, and you have an 8 degree reference angle. Well, you've gone 180 plus 8 degrees more which is 188. 39 degrees in quadrant 1, well your rotation angle is just 39 degrees. And it says 90 degrees between 3 and 4. Well, if you're 90 degrees you're straight up and down, so the reference angle is the angle back to the x-axis which is also 90 degrees. So, there we go. Reference angles and angle rotations. Hopefully you didn't find that too bad.